Good afternoon and welcome to Professional View, uh, one of many programs and services offered by the College of Arts and Sciences Career Success Center to ensure that you are career ready. Uh, on the note of different events that we offer, uh, next week on October 6th, we're hosting the Osprey Career Fair in collaboration with the Coggin College of Business. Great opportunity for you to come out uh, virtually and interact with employers for internships and uh, job opportunities. Uh, the evening before, we're also hosting in collaboration with Coggin a diversity mixer uh, from seven until eight. You can get more information about both those uh, events on Handshake uh, to sign up and participate. Uh, in regards to today's session, I'm excited to introduce our speakers for today, who will cover the topic of effective interviewing strategies. Um, as we go through the session, uh, I'll give you the chance to uh, put questions in the Q&A and the chat box. I'll interject those as the session proceeds. Please, this is for you. Ask any questions you have uh, as the speakers are sharing. So on that note, uh, I'll introduce to you, we have three speakers. We have Jessica Smith, uh, Mary Beth Ashley, and Nick Allen, all with iMethods. And again, they're going to share some great information with you regarding effective interview strategies. Thank you so much for being here and I'm gonna turn it over to you. All right. Hey guys, uh, my name is Nick Allen and I am uh, one of the IT healthcare recruiters at iMethods and um, wanted just to connect with you and, and we're each going to have a different portion as far as um, just to help you um, kind of give you that roadmap as far as what interviews will look like, how to prepare for them during those interviews, and also um, what to do after an interview. And so definitely encourage you, like um, Vivian uh, explained, if you have any questions, feel free to, to ask us. Uh, and we would love to have this to be more of a dialogue um, and just uh, get to know you guys as well. But before we did that, um, I did want to kind of just introduce to you a video and uh, we'll get started with that first. Um, and we'll get rolling. Amy, it says you are trained in technology. That's very good. Are you adept at Excel? No. PowerPoint. No. Publisher. Not really. Exactly in what area of technology mm -hmm. are you proficient? <laughs> Snapchat, Pinterest, Instagram, Vine, Twitter, you know, the big ones. I'm surprised you didn't say Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> That's for old people like my parents. <laughs> That's funny. Well, Amy, when you're working for me, you have to have those kind of research skills because I'll send you things for you to comb through and get the answers and send them to me. So for that, you've got to be really good at technology. For stuff like that, no problem. I'll just ask Siri. You'll you know, just ask Siri? You know, Siri, tell me this. Siri, find me that. We're all good at getting you the answers. Tell Siri I want you ready to go at 8 sharp each and every morning. I don't understand. What don't you understand? What you just said. You don't understand, be ready to go? No, you said eight, right? Yes. Eight like in the morning, eight? Yes, in the morning. Yeah, that kind of doesn't work for me. Who gets up at eight? I do. I Skype with my French boyfriend in Paris until like three in the morning. I don't even get to Starbucks until like 10 where I order my grande chai tea latte, three pumps, skim milk, light water, 2% foam, extra hot, but not too hot. So if it's okay, I work best in the morning at 10.45. <laughs> wow. Amy, I don't think we're gonna be a good fit. Why are you so negative? I can sense your hostilities, and right now I am not feeling very safe. I've been here for over five minutes, and the only nice thing you have said to me was nice resume, which I typed all night for this meeting with you. You've given me no guidance, no validation, no encouragement, no supervision. Is there an HR director somewhere? 
HR director? Yes, I need to speak to someone. I may have to take off today as a mental health day. Take today off, you, Amy, Amy, look at me. You don't work here. Are you firing me? Okay, yes. <laughs> All right. Let me exit out of this real quickly. All right. So um, I know this is, uh, we're recording this, you know, obviously for maybe some students that may not be able to attend. Um, and Vivian, are there other students in here? I, I might not see it quite well with the gallery mode, but just wanted to confirm. Yes, we have at least 10 participants that have come oh, in so far. Perfect. Uh, let me see here. Just want to make sure um, that I've got everyone 10 attendees. Okay, perfect. All right, so this is something where I, um, you know, I may not be able to necessarily see your faces, but I do have a list of the attendees. So I would love to make this a little bit more interactive. So I may call on you just to ask you a few questions. Um, but you know, my, my portion of this presentation is really going to be about, um, before the interview, you know, what do you do? You know, what do you, um, research for? And so all that to say, I'm going to just call on someone just to see if they don't mind sharing with me, you know, uh, uh, as far as what they would do. Um, and Brittany Jung, do you mind sharing with me as far as what would be something if you were to, uh, apply for a job, they gave you an interview request. What would be your first step as far as preparing for that interview? And Nick, it may take a few minutes to respond. They don't have the ability to verbally chime in. So uh, yeah, so if she's responding. Um, gotcha, okay. Go. In all nope. honesty, she's saying, what am I going to wear? Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great point. As you can see here, I made sure to put my finest clothes on today just to represent what I would do for an interview. Maybe not necessarily a bow tie, but maybe. Um, that's actually a great point. What would I, what should I wear? Um, each uh, company is different. Um, I had an opportunity to uh, interview with LinkedIn out in California, and I came in something similar to this as what I'm wearing. And the one thing I realized once I got out, everyone's wearing plaid shirts and jeans and van shoes. And I realized I'm overdressed. All right, I'm gonna lose the coat. Like at least get rid of that. Just uh, try to be a little bit more uh, in tuned with the culture or whatever it may be. And what you would wear is definitely uh, something to think about and to prepare for. Um, Diane, uh, what are your thoughts? Any areas that you would say, you know, I need to really prepare for this before this interview? Give you a few minutes. Yes, great. It's something where, you know, speaking to other people or eye contact, that's huge. And, and even just, you know, role playing, practicing or role practicing with parents or friends. And um, that kind of dives into one of the, the preparations is thinking about situational questions. What will they be asking? And during that time, it's always important because in your brain, you're going a mile a minute. Um, but you're also wanting to make sure that you're engaging and you're making eye contact because, you know, if you're looking elsewhere, you're, you're, you, don't, you don't may necessarily look engaged. So kind of practicing and, and uh, thinking about some situational questions that the hiring manager might be asking you um, are definitely important. And Emma, get ready because I'm going to be asking you the next question. But um, just expecting scenario interview questions about job specific skills. So as far as, you know, the company itself, any areas that you would say, I really need to know this about the company um, before my interview. Uh, Emma, what are your thoughts on, on that as far as doing some research on the company?
I think researching a company values could uh, better prepare me for the type of questions that they would ask. Absolutely. It's something where, you know, when you're preparing for this, you want to know what is the hiring manager like? What is their previous job? And that's one thing that myself, Mary Beth and Jessica utilize is LinkedIn. Um, going on there and seeing where was the hiring manager before this company? What was her uh, career path like? And having that in the back of your mind before your interview is always important to do your research on the hiring manager, but as well as the company. What are their core values? Are they in line with my core values? Um, what's important to you in a, in a company? So Alexandria, if you don't mind sharing with me, I would love to hear, you know, if you were to apply for a job and you are looking at doing some research and want to see what are their core values or what is their, um, their mission statement, what's important to you in a culture, in a company that you're interviewing with? give Alexandra a few more minutes, but this is a, a higher percentage of female male ratio in this classroom, I've noticed. I see Michael in there. I'm going to ask you a question coming up soon. All right, we'll keep moving on. Alexandra, I'll give you a few more minutes as we continue, but uh, so we just kind of looking at the layout as far as, oh, here we go. Hmm, that is a hard question, but I would want to ensure that their values align with mine in terms of the work and outside life ratio. I would like uh, want to uh, expect me to contact outside of ours. That's absolutely great. You know, it's something where each job is different. There's some jobs where it's a, a nine to five after 5 p.m. You don't have to necessarily worry about, no, you're good, Alexandra, don't worry. There's, there's some jobs out there where at 5 p.m. you don't have to worry about uh, um, what's happening, you know, during the off hours. You can go to it the next morning and, and take care of it then. And there's some jobs that may require more of a speed to market where, you know, I may not necessarily be able to, um, just take some time off. Maybe I got to respond to something quicker. And, and so understanding the job description itself is huge is does this line up with my schedule, my personal life, my financial life, um, looking at the employer and making sure that their values align with mine. I, I definitely agree. Couldn't agree more with you. Um, and so that's something where you're always wanting to make sure you're doing research. You're always wanting to be prepared to answer those questions that they may have, whether they're situational, maybe they may ask you a, a specific question about their company. You know, Nick, what, uh, what do you think, uh, give me some examples as far as why our core values at iMethods line up with your personal life. You hope that you have researched and find out and, and figured out what those core values are so that you are prepared to answer those questions in a face to face interview or a virtual interview, which is what we're going through. And, and so that's something where even this virtual interview process that we are going through now with COVID, um, it kind of shifts some things a, a little bit. So you're wanting to make sure that your technology is ready. You're wanting to make sure that you've got maybe some notes um, ready to go and all the research as far as the hiring manager, um, the job description, uh, what the company is offering and, and maybe what the benefits are and the culture. It's something where, um, you know, I previously, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I was uh, uh, applying for a job and my interview process was actually virtually at the time. And it was something where, I had to figure out and look up, okay, it was for higher education because I, I had a higher education background and I had to figure out, okay, how many degrees do they offer? How many, how many bachelor's degrees? How many master's degrees? Um, and it's something where that ended up being some of our questions as far as, Nick, can you share with me what you know about the company? And it was something where, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I went online and looked at where their top programs are, where students go after graduation. Um, but it is something that in that preparation, you're always wanting to make sure that you are, are researching. Um, and, and outside of the research side of it, uh, exactly what um, I want to say Brittany said as far as what am I wearing? Do I look pre presentable? Do I look professional? Do I look like I, uh, I would fit into this, into this um, culture as far as contextualizing what their environment is like for my, uh, for my LinkedIn uh, example? Um, 
as far as other options, the biggest thing is just making sure that you are in line with the interview and that you've got everything at least that you can do and prepare yourself. And then obviously the biggest thing is to be yourself. It's something where, you know, a lot of uh, candidates that we interview and get prepared to interview with other hiring managers, um, they want to see, is it a culture fit? You know, there's some companies that would say, I see your IT skills, I see your technology and your experience, but we really want to see, are you a culture fit? Are you, do you have a personality that would mesh well with this team that they're specifically working on? And sometimes I know nerves can kind of get in the way of your personality. So the biggest thing is the more you prepare, the more you kind of set yourself up, the more you can honestly be yourself and they can honestly see your personality and your genuineness through that interview process. Um, even though in the back of your mind, you're rattle thinking in your mind, you're rattling off, what do I need to know? This hiring manager, um, you know, a short story that I also give with this college that I interviewed with, um, I researched her background. I looked her up on LinkedIn. I found out she was a manager for a restaurant before she was a director of enrollment at a university. And I tied that in with a conversation. Nick, share a little bit more about, you know, some stressful moments you had, uh, you know, in your career. And I, I weaved in, you know, one time I was a server and I had an upset parent and the, my, my customers were piling up and, you know, it was a stressful moment. And it's something where I just had to go in the back room, take a breather, just kind of reevaluate, gather my thoughts and go out there and try to execute as best as I can and give the best quality customer service as possible. And that's something where I made sure I weaved in that, that conversation because I knew she had a restaurant background. Her and I have that connection that we had. And sure enough, she shared with me and says, I know exactly what you're talking about. And you know, I, I have those moments as well. And it was, it was something where we related on a different note uh, with our careers. And so it's something where it's super beneficial to do your preparation, um, prepare what um, some answers that you may have, specifically situational questions, um, making sure if you are virtually that you've got all of your technology uh, ready to go, you have all of your updates, whether it's Zoom, Teams, or WebEx. There's so many different virtual platforms. Um, and test them out with people that you know, your friends, your teachers, your parents, making sure that your technology is up and running. So that is, those are some of the key points as far as before an interview starts is doing your research, making sure you know what you're wearing, and also making sure that you have understood the job description, what they're looking for, and have done some research on that company. And so uh, that's my little segment. Uh, like I said, if you guys have any questions throughout this time, feel free to ask us in the chat and we'll do our best to answer any questions for you. I see Alexander did ask a question. Uh, would they ask us business specific questions as a career fair uh, when there might be 20 companies? So as far as uh, business specific questions uh, at a career, yeah, they would. As far as, you know, no matter how many questions there are, you know, at a career fair, um, they, they may ask you some of the, the detailed questions of what they're looking for as far as what's your flexibility like, how many hours do you want to work, you know, tell me about a specific skill that you have. But um, that's something where that's a great question. And that's where, you know, if you're trying to figure that out, you can even turn that around and ask them, what are the specific requirements that you're looking for with this company? What's, what are the, the key points that a, a company would be looking for in a successful candidate or a successful employee? Um, so that's, that is a great question. All right. I don't know who's next. I think Mary Beth might be up next. So I'm going to mute my mic and let her take over. Appreciate you guys letting me take the time with you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Nick. We really appreciate it. And I'm going to count on you to continue to call on people because I don't have access to people's names. So thank you so much. I'm Mary Beth Ashley. I'm a client results manager at iMethod. So I work with the client side of the house. And I'm really excited to be able to have this opportunity to help you today um, as you're navigating you know, the next steps in your career and professional um, progression and even entering into the workforce. So with that in mind, just continuing the theme of doing your research. And now we're gonna flip it to the other side of thinking about you know, um, just as you're entering and researching your clients and your accounts and um, you know, the people that you'd be working with, they're going to be researching you, right? And looking into who you are and learning more about your personal brand. So that's what we'll be talking about is your personal brand and how you can leverage it to be able to land the job that you want. And so that being said, how do you define branding? Have you ever thought about what your own personal brand is on social media, on Instagram, Snapchat? Like, 
what are your thoughts as to what your brand might look like? And Michael, I'm going to ask for uh, a response from you as far as your, your own brand, if you don't mind sharing with us. And then Caitlin, you're going to be next. So just so you're aware. Thanks, Nick. And Mary Beth, while we're waiting for Michael, could you share with us your brand? Ooh, yes, that's a great one. So really with that in mind, when we think of a brand, it's really saying who you are, what are you known for, and, and what do you have to offer? So with that, I would say that my brand is someone who really has, my skill set would be, I'm a very empathetic person which means that I can easily relate to other people and understand where they're coming from, that I'm a great listener, um, that I can really listen to what they're sharing to me and to be able to articulate back to them, um, you know, especially with my job and, and working with health systems, any needs that they might have and being able to present solutions according to those needs. And then really being able to be tenacious and tenacious, I should say, and follow through, right? That I'm very persistent and being able to follow up um, and that's really kind of what I'm known for. Michael looks like he says, I like to keep a lower profile on social media and rely on making good relationships with past employers who know I'm hardworking and get, can get whatever job they need done. That's wonderful, Michael. That's really a great way to be able to leverage your personal relationships. I mean, I would say, in fact, you know, at iMethods, that's how we've grown as a company and as an organization is through that uh, referral of our colleagues and friends. I would say, gosh, I think last year alone of the 20 of the 63% of people that we put to work, it came from similar type of referrals or people who just restarted on another project. So that kind of um, networking is invaluable. Um, that being said, you know, really social media does also play a large part um, on you know, your personal brand. And really even to the point of LinkedIn, you know, if you don't already have a LinkedIn account, I would encourage you to create one and to go ahead and start um, building up your network that way as well. That's a really great way just to be able to continue your brand. Um, and really you know, thinking about Instagram, right? And influencers, you know, the amount of followers that you have typically correlates with how knowledgeable or skilled you are in a specific industry. So if you're a leader in your specialty, people you know, trust your opinion and they wanna see things that you're doing. You know, think about like LeBron James, right? He's arguably the best basketball player, not only of his generation, but of all time. I um, mean, he has 45 million Instagram followers, and that really just correlates to him being seen as that go-to leader and expert in what he does. So really, um, another way of defining it would just be by Jeff Bezos and what he says. With that being in mind, who knows who Jeff Bezos is? Who's heard of Jeff? Okay, I see a couple of hands. Perfect. So we know, right, he's the CEO and founder of Amazon, right? And he defines personal branding as what people say about you when you're not in the room. So just another way of thinking about it. So as you're, you know, looking to get your next career opportunity, just know that colleges, employees, they're actively reviewing your social media. So it's time to start thinking about, you know, what if you were to search your name on Google, and by the way, who's ever searched their name on Google? what was said about you what popped up there's too many nick allens for me so that's a very generic name some arrests some in trouble with the law <laughs> perfect okay so great question from alexandria she's saying how heavy does meaningful experiences from high school that are posted on linkedin stand on underclassmen, undergraduates, Instagram, obituaries, that kind of thing. So if I'm understanding you correctly, Alexandria, you're saying, you know, those posts that may have happened that are either directly posted by you or indirectly by friends and colleagues. Um, oh, the obituaries was for the search. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. I appreciate that. Um, so it's, if you Google your name, it sounds like someone who had your name recently passed. Um, I'm glad it wasn't you though, right? That's a good thing. Um, so that being said, if I'm understanding your question correctly though, with regards to posts that may have been done either by you or by colleagues, it does absolutely you know, have um, 
an impact right on what you do, whether it's at the undergraduate level or graduate or even moving on into the professional segment. So I would encourage you for any of those posts that you may not want people to see, now's the time to delete those. Now's the time to go through your accounts and to scrub any material that you wouldn't want prospective colleges or universities or employers to see. And really to use your platforms as an opportunity to showcase your skills and highlights and talents, right? And so that could just be things that you're passionate about, whether it's photography or, you know, literature or sports, think about what brings you joy and what you're really good at and use your platforms to highlight that as a way to help stand out from the crowd. I mean, it's just a great way to be able to connect with someone because you don't know if those are also their hobbies and their, um, you know, passions as well. And it's just a great way to connect like Nick did when he was on that job interview and researched the fact that the hiring manager had previous restaurant experience. So when you're thinking about creating content, you want that content to be honest and interactive. You want it to be able to leverage multiple platforms, right? So that you're sharing it across Instagram, LinkedIn, um, Snapchat accordingly, and to really target a specific audience. So think about just you know, who you're wanting to focus on and to make sure that your content is relevant and that you're telling a good story, that it's really um, relevant and able to engage your audience and to be able to think about just the art of storytelling. That's invaluable when you're going into a job um, interview because of the fact that you're doing just that. You're telling them a story about yourself, right? You're telling them about your past experiences, about your strengths, about what you're looking for, and the goals that you have for yourself for the next one to five years. So really get good at being able to tell the story and tell the story of you and knowing what your strengths and weaknesses are. Um, in terms of developing your personal brand, I'm gonna pause for a moment. Any questions so far before I move on? Okay, good. So if anything pops up, I'll be happy to stop. But when you're thinking about developing your personal brand, you want it to be consistent. You want to be able to leverage your network and just do exactly like Michael's doing, right? Whether it's someone, you know, that you've worked with in the past that maybe you grew up with who, who knows you and would be able to serve as that referral or who would know somebody who could connect you with an employer. Absolutely. I would say networking is one of the greatest ways to do that, whether that's in person or virtually. It's a wonderful way to be able to advance your career. That's how I got the job that I'm in today is reached out to a friend who worked at the company that I uh, work with now and just said, hey, can I pick your brain? Would love to learn more about your company and what you do. And the next thing I knew, it turned into a job interview, right? So there's all kinds of really great ways that you can leverage your network. And, and as you're creating your brand and what you want to be known as, the key is to really stay positive, to focus on your strengths and, and to take advantage of those opportunities. And so with that in mind, after you've done all that and you've gotten the job interview, let's talk about you know what best practices look like, right? Because as we are in this virtual environment, we see the value of it. More employers are gonna be leveraging platforms like Zoom to complete interviews just simply for the fact it's so efficient and effective and being able to interact with people. So, you know, as we go into that, start thinking about as you're doing your research um, and you're thinking about, you know, what the company is looking for, what their culture is like, what their values are like and how they align with yours. Be prepared to speak to that and then be prepared to speak to how your strengths and your values will be of benefit to that employer. Um, start thinking about, you know, some situational type questions that highlight those strengths um, and know that most employers are looking for you to answer them in what's called like a star format, right? So that situational task action result. You give a situation, a story of a situation that happened. You talked about the task that you faced, the actions that you took to address that, and then the results that you had. And so some of those um, best questions, you know, situational type interview questions would be, tell me about a time you had to collaborate with a coworker or a colleague, or, you know, you worked on a project at school and you had a difficult time getting them to work together. How did you collaborate together to be able to deliver your project and, and on time and, and have a positive outcome? Um, 
with that being said, Jessica's going to get more into the best practices, interviews, do's and don'ts. But any final questions for me before I turn it over to Jess? There was a question, Maribeth, that popped up from Michael um, yeah. in the Q&A, and he said, I recently got a job at a startup restaurant and went into the job relatively blind. What is the best way to research and prepare yourself and your brand to best prepare for a simil uh, similar situation? Sure. So I think the best thing you can do is be an expert in yourself, right? In terms of knowing what your strengths are, what you have to offer, of having a couple of ready-made answers to go so that, you know, when they go in to ask you, you aren't caught off guard, that you're ready to be able to articulate your strengths and your skills and how that would align. And then I also think when you are caught off guard, there's nothing wrong with asking a bunch of questions, right? It shows your level of interest. It allows the hiring manager to be able to share more about themselves. People love talking about themselves um, and really being able to get them to open up and engage with you, I think is a really great way of asking really smart, specific, what's called discovery questions. That is a great way to be able to get the employer to tell you what they're looking for when maybe you haven't had the opportunity to research them ahead of time. Yeah, and to piggyback off of Mary Beth real quick, you know, something as far as discovery questions for you guys, just to, to have this, you know, kind of an acronym to remember is the TED. So tell me about a time, explain to me or describe to me. And so those are key questions that I think they're not yes or no questions. So they're open ended. But also, you know, great. Those, that's a great point. As far as a startup, you don't know, you know, you don't know what their track record is like. Each startup company is different. It also depends on how the person is leading. And so, um, great questions like, like I said, the TED questions. You know, describe to me some of the challenges that you guys are facing as a startup company. You know, get an understanding as far as you know, because they're at some point you are going there and preparing to interview with them, and they're interviewing you. But at some point, there is going to be a turn in that interview where you are the one interviewing them. Um, and so it's something just to, to not be afraid to ask those types of questions, but great question. No, very much so. And I'll, um, I'll kind of wrap up here in these last um, about 15 or so minutes that we have to talk about um, some do's and don'ts while interviewing. Uh, I know one thing that we're all experiencing this year, especially is the virtual interview. So that is something certainly we've done before. WebEx, Zoom has been around for a while, um, Microsoft Teams, all of that. But it, we've seen a huge uptick, um, especially in our end. We work in staffing. We um, help schedule interviews all the time for hiring managers and candidates um, quite often. And more now than ever, we're having to leverage technology. Uh, and so I think our biggest thing that I talk to, you know, especially with camps about is, a virtual interview, although virtual, pretend like it's in person. Um, have your video on, and I can give a real life example. Just last week, we had some very senior level um, candidates that were interviewing for a director level position. One of the candidates was asked multiple times to turn their video on. Uh, and that's just, I, I'm not sure what, what the hang up was before. I know there can be distractions. You all probably saw my um, toddler <laughs> walk up. So it is hard when you're interviewing and at home um, to make sure you don't have distractions, dogs barking in the back. So you definitely want to mitigate as many risks as possible if you're doing a virtual interview. Uh, so if you are at home, um, put pets up. Uh, if you have little ones, you know, see if someone can maybe watch them for just a bit. Um, or there's also too, uh, I know, some of the libraries throughout Jacksonville offer private rooms um, where you can actually go into a private room where it's a little more quiet. I'm sure even there at UNF, there's probably some um, private rooms you can utilize for virtual interviews. So just keep in mind the one thing about virtual, although it's face-to-face, -face, there's a lot of these background distractions that you don't have when you're on an actual face-to-face. -face. Um, some other things that are, I think, givens, but again, we've kind of seen it all in our business. Think about your background. Um, we had a lady interview one time and her cat was doing a lot of climbing around in her background. And the manager was so distracted by this woman's cat. I mean, it's like, this is not a casual coffee virtual conversation. This is an interview. So make sure, um, and also too, that it's not messy. If people can see laundry piled up, um, 
you know, or toys everywhere. It just, it can be very just distracting. So when you're doing a virtual interview, think about your background, make sure that the room is well lit. Also make sure the camera is positioned well. That seems again, like a given, but you all would be so surprised. We have seen some funny stuff. Again, I'm just pointing from real life examples. These are true stories. We had a manager that said, well, I didn't mind speaking to the candidate, but I could just see up their nose the whole time because for whatever reason, the candidate's camera was like, I, I don't know. So you think you would, those are little things, but you would be surprised. So make sure the camera is lit well. Um, make sure your phone is on silent. Um, oh, a big, big thing, test the Zoom if you can. Test the WebEx, text the, test the Microsoft Teams, like whatever way you're doing the virtual interview, if you are, have the capacity to test that with maybe the um, admin that started, um, the uh, that sent the, or setting up the interview or whatever it might be, if you can test it, that really helps to just mitigate any technology issues that are most likely going to happen because that's what happens. Still dress professionally. I mean, one thing I guess about virtual interviews is um, you can be like Nick. I wonder though if Nick has on like sh basketball shorts right now. Awesome, Nick. <laughs> But if he did have on basketball shorts, that's okay. My, my shirt's tucked in though. Nice. No okay. Basketball there shorts. You go. <laughs> to your basketball shorts. <laughs> um, but you definitely want to make sure that you're still, you look the part professional um, from the waist up at least. Um, and there's a lot of other tips and tricks. I let Vivi know that we've got some um, really great things. I will send this to her and, and she can get this out to you guys um, just because I think it's helpful. A lot of it is, is stuff that, that you know, um, but it's just, it's good reminders. Um, and I think it too, a big thing is just, especially virtual, be yourself, smile, you know, be engaged. It is really hard virtually sometimes to be at a level of engagement like face to face, but try to be as engaged as possible. Um, another thing I want to share with you guys, just good do's and don'ts for the interview. Um, I can even tell you, so yesterday I had the opportunity to interview a college grad. Uh, the young man that I interviewed yesterday for an opportunity uh, just graduated from Georgia Southern University. So I'll, I won't say anything else, tell names or anything, because I'll give you pros and cons of his interview. And again, he is someone that just, just is getting out of school and trying to get his career started. Um, we actually were able to do it in person. It was just, you know, six feet distance, but we were, I was actually able to meet with him in person. Um, he came in a suit. Um, he said, you know, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. I like those things. Mr. Ms last name. He didn't call by my first name. I let him definitely call me by my first name, but he didn't just assume that. I thought that was very respectful. Um, and he was nervous, but as the conversation went on, it was, he, he got better. Here's some things I noticed that he could have done better. And again, this will just come with experience, but I will just go and tell for you all that are on this call. Um, and Mary Beth touched on this, but when you come into an interview, Yep, you want to dress the part, have copies of your resume. He didn't. Even if it's a virtual interview, I would ask when I log into the virtual, I have a copy of my resume. I can email to everyone real quick. Do you need that? Most likely they're not going to, but I think it's nice to ask because even if it, if it was a face-to-face, -face, you would have copies of your resume. Have something to write with, pen and paper. That goes for face-to-face -face and virtual and go ahead and have, be thinking about these, the situational type things. So here was the problem with the young man yesterday. He was asked situational questions. Tell me about a time when you had a challenge and had to overcome it, these types of questions. And we were fine with him pulling from his college experience. I completely understood he didn't have a lot of work experience to draw from. So I was fine with college, personal, but I just wanted to see how he handled stress and pressure. It took him so long to figure, think up something. And I get it because it's hard to think up those things on the spot when you're nervous. So it is so important before you go into an interview, you're going to take pen and paper with you to take notes from them, have situational things jotted down. Think about, man, when was a time I had to really overcome some really hard obstacles? You know, maybe it was a project that you guys have worked on for school uh, or tell me about a time you had a difficult coworker and you worked through that or a difficult you know, there was another student maybe on the project that you're working on, and you had to work through that. Go ahead and write down stuff, top accomplishments, things you're most proud of, write those down. Because I promise you, if you are in an interview, you're gonna get asked these questions and it is best to be prepared, 
here are some things that I've already got, I've been thinking about, got jotted down. I'm glad you asked me. Let me tell you a little bit about this and then start going through some of those things. It'll just help you more so some of those nerves and anxiety kind of work their way out. Um, and then for the sake of time, I'll kind of wrap up here, but certainly anytime uh, the interview's ending, and this is what happens when an interview's finished. Nick, do you have any questions? The worst thing Nick can do if I'm interviewing him is look at me and go, I don't have any questions. Ask me something. You don't have any questions? I can't tell you the number of times I've interviewed people. And I'm like, anything, right? Just ask me, why do you work here? You know, what, what do you expect of me in this job? Ask a question. Don't ever end an interview with, no, I, I don't think I have anything. Just ask something. So again, have a few questions jotted down so you'll be ready to roll. Um, and then I would certainly say, what are the next steps? Because you want to know that. What, you know, when maybe can I expect to hear from you? I'm really excited. And then when you get home, send a follow-up thank you. Thank the people that took the time to interview you. Reiterate any couple bullet points maybe you might have missed. It doesn't need to be a long thank you, one or two paragraphs, and send that to them. That goes a long way. I will tell you all, there are adults um, that are senior, tenured in their career, and they do not send follow-up thank you notes. But you get someone new in their career that does and takes that extra step, um, connects with that hiring manager on LinkedIn, whatever it might be, all those little things can really help. So I know, Vivian, we're really wrapping up on time here. Um, I, are there any further questions um, from anyone? We, we do have a question in the Q&A. Yeah. Uh, Michael is thinking ahead um, okay. into post-COVID times. Mm. Wanting to know about some of the common uh, don'ts or flaws or issues people have in, in regular face-to-face -face interviews. Yeah, that is a great question. And I really hope we get back to more of those face-to-face. -face. Um, they're just so much easier than the virtual. Um, so great question, Michael. And like I said, the most common flaws I see are not bringing something to write with, not having questions prepared um, for the interviewee, uh, not having some situational things written down, uh, situations, accomplishments, things that you can pull from to be able to ask quickly. Also, not dressing appropriately. I mean, I've interviewed people that'll wear a polo and khakis and it's like this is an interview wear a suit um wear a suit jacket ladies you know there's wear a suit jacket and closed toed shoes don't wear flip-flops i know we're in florida but like it's, maybe nice dress sandals are okay i don't want to say get it and even like nick said you know read your audience if you're interviewing at some really hip trendy marketing place you might not need to come like in a stiff suit you know kind of when nick got to linkedin he was like oh i need to take the jacket off he still had on his tie, you know, his, his um, you know, button-up collared shirt, but he took the jacket off. So, but still, again, dress appropriately, have something to write with, bring copies of your resume, have questions prepared, um, send that follow-up thank you. Those are the big things that I see that people miss. Um, so I hope that um, it is an answer to your question of, you know, what, what to do and what, what not to do. Yeah, I would say also another don't do once we get back to face to face interviews is showing up too early. Um, there is such a thing as showing yeah. up too early where uh, you either are going to be awkwardly sitting in a lobby for 40 minutes or uh, maybe sitting. It's fine if you show up just sitting in your car type deal and kind of reviewing. But that is a big no, no. As far as I would say, and please correct me, Jessica, if I'm wrong, I'd say 15 minutes is a yeah. respect. Amount of time I think 15 early. minutes is perfect. It's, mm -hmm. it, it can be a little annoying for the person interviewing you if they think you're coming at noon and you show up at 1115. You're, they're like, oh gosh, we've got 45 minutes. Definitely show up early, just not too early. And definitely don't show up late, right? I think a 10 to 15 minute early is perfect. Great point. So for the last um, minute or so, are there any last uh, tidbits of advice uh, you'd like to offer before we end the session from any of our panelists today? I think the biggest thing, um, like Mary Beth said, know who you are. Um, you know, there's some really great uh, skill set type inter, um, uh, quizzes you can take, Strengths Finders, Enneagram, those kind of things to really kind of hone in on your true strengths and, and the core values that you have. And, and you know who you are, but it just helps you articulate it better. So I would say for anyone, get a Strengths Finder book, take the quiz get your top strengths. Um, that is really going to help you, especially with that personal branding, knowing who you are, knowing what your value is and what you bring to the table for these employees that are interviewing you because you've got um, so much potential. But sometimes I know you get nervous in interviews and it's hard to articulate that. And you never want to leave an interview kicking yourself like, ah, 
man, I should have said this or should have been a little more confident. Be confident in who you are um, and what you can bring because that's what employees are looking for. Somebody with a drive, a fire, a sense of urgency to work hard. So my last bit, look up StrengthsFinder 2.0. It's a book. It's You can get it on Amazon. You can take, um, it'll give you a code to take a quiz online and get your top strengths. Yeah, and my biggest takeaway, and it's not necessarily interview related, I don't care if you're a freshman in college or a senior in college, make sure that you guys try to find some internships under your belt while you're in your college career. That does nothing but build your resume while you're in college. And it also gives you an understanding, is this the career path that I wanna take once I do graduate? So try to get those real life experiences while you're in, whether freshman to senior year in college. Awesome. Did you have a last point, Mary Beth, or do you think everything's been covered pretty well? They've done a wonderful job of covering everything. I think it's been covered well. The best takeaway is just, you know, know yourself, be strong in who you are and being able to articulate that, that will go far. Great, thank you so much. Mary Beth, Nick and Jessica, um, we do appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules to share information and insight to help our students prepare effectively uh, for their upcoming interviews. This has been a great session to the students. Um, please look out for uh, an evaluation form uh, for the entire Professional U event, uh, as well as uh, information regarding upcoming sessions. Uh, I hope everyone has a great and enjoyable day. Thank you for having us. Thank you so it. much. Thank you. Bye.